They're loading up. And here we go. Let's see it happen. Coming into the loser semis. Oh God, Harpy's back. Uh, oh. Perfect uh, color clear on John's side. Why do I hear yelling? What are they yelling about out there? I mean, there's also uh, things that get pretty heated in Yu-Gi-Oh. Ah, oh, right, Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, the Shadow Realm and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, activating trap cards. Mm -hmm. that, that's a thing, right? Yeah. All I know about is Exodia. It's he does obliterate. Attack his life points directly. Yes. I I I was re I was a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged as that was coming out. That 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 informed a lot of my knowledge. You know what they say. Nice teaspoon zero for salted. Exactly. Salted just layering on enough combo damage. A beautiful TST. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Ooh. Interesting choice of. Uh... I mean, is that is that a setup for for a wild L spin of some kind? Oh, nope, that resolves the dependency. Yeah, yeah, it, it worked. Um, not entirely sure what the goal there was. Maybe the goal was just down stack. If that was the the goal, then it worked out. John Numbers now having salted on the ropes oh, and pushing him over. Oh, attempted a, a greedy tease in there at the top, but did not quite find it. Mm. TST set up for John. Executed beautifully. Beautiful nine combo there for John Numbers. Really strong combo damage. So, so, so the the characters in Puyo Puyo that uh, is is that an anime? Color clear for John. Mm -hmm. Is Puyo Puyo an anime or? Another game franchise? Um, game franchise uh, made by Sega. So, fun fact, Sonic is a playable character in this game. Outstanding. Uh -uh. I, learned, I learned new things I every day. I lost it when I found out that that was a thing. <laughs> it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. I was like, why doesn't everybody play as Sonic? Um, but yeah, I mean, so the the game does have a campaign that does teach you about both uh, Puyo Puyo and Tetris modes along the way, and I've never played it, so mm -hmm. don't quote me, but I believe the characters in this are from the campaign. Hmm, got it. Yeah, I, um, I played PPT one time, I played a swap match, and I won, and so I decided I'm never playing PPT swap again so I can maintain a perfect 1-0 swap record. <laughs> it was at a LAN tournament too. Someone uh, was trying to play someone else for a warm up and they were unavailable, and so they just kind of pointed at me. Like, I'll play you. And I won. You know, you, those things never happen if you don't try new things. Yeah, except I'm not trying it again. Because <laughs> I shouldn't have won. But I do love, uh, you know, Puyo Puyo is a, a very difficult game mode to play. I uh, don't fully appreciate it. Uh, so, you know, it is nice to see the Tetris where I understand everything that's going on. Yeah, I I, I feel like there, there are some modes where one player is playing Puyo Puyo and the yep. other is playing Tetris. Yep, and that's just over my head. Oh, John Numbers being able to get that eyepiece over. A little dicey. No, Harpy, please don't say. Last time I was here, I was told that Harpy has an alternate voice that does actually sing on key, and uh, Salted just chooses to not use it. <laughs> every, time I'm every time I'm reminded of this factoid, I am filled with rage. Uh, salted... Uh, Little bit on the fence, but up oh, TST and another one. I hear cheering out there. Okay, chooses to not take it. Honestly, that's smart. 
just building up the combo, I guess. John numbers up two, possibly three. We'll see what happens. Yeah, Sultan is in a tough position there, and yeah, that is the round. That is gonna be. Salted down 3-0, three, three John on a roll. TST coming up. Both C-spin openers right there. Oh, wait, never mind. John Numbers chooses to take PCO. the PC, and both of them finding the PC on their, uh, their C-spin opener. Sorry. So PCO is actually a oh. specific opener that only does like the first um, 10 pieces. Got it. Yeah, so if they're finding a PC outside of the first 10 pieces, then it's generally like part of a different opener. Appreciate the clarification. Yeah, I find that um, you know with these tournaments, there's some people who are watching it for their first time. And so it is, I, I do try to like clarify and, and recap things. Definitely feel free to ask any questions if you're curious about any of the terminology or anything. Uh, uh, no, this th this has been a really excellent learning experience for me, and thank you for helping me uh, improve my ability to commentate in the future as well. Sultan has openly admitted to asking me questions while we're commentating TEC so he can gain game knowledge. He has openly admitted this multiple times. I mean, no, that that's the one of the best things about this community <laughs> is the knowledge sharing and openness uh, that all of the people who are informed demonstrate. And that's perfect clear. Yeah, that is and a very nice th PC. That's, that, uh, yeah. That's going to be a little bit brutal. Yeah, that is that is not... Yeah, you just can't uh, come back Salted getting that. rather brutally salted. <laughs> uh, taking it 4-1 in favor of John Numbers. Yeah, one of the other fun things that Sultan just told me is that, um, so I talked about Modern Tetris Showdown 4. Um, one of the interesting things about that setup is that um, the players can very much hear the commentators because you're mm. just sitting right next to each other. So in MTS3, uh, Sultan found out when it was the correct time to zone by listening to the commentators. Mm. He used the commentators being an earshot to give him game knowledge. I mean, it's it's an interesting uh, proposition. I know that in, in some eras of classic commentary, uh, play, commentators were expected to be giving score checks because the players weren't going to be screen looking or mm -hmm. could not screen look mm -hmm. uh, at the time. And I know that's more partially passed passed into uh, mm -hmm. passed into obscurity. Uh, but I think that's still the case on some of the stream tournaments as well, where they, where they can't look at each other. Uh, Speculosity asks, is there any difference between this and regular head-to-head -head Tetris? Uh, Speculosity, regular head-to-head -head Tetris could mean a any number of things. Uh, as we've talked about, there are a number of different modes. This is Puyo Puyo Tetris, which is uh, a subcategory of you know m the, the modern Tetris mm -hmm. world. Uh, the other modern Tetris that's played right uh, today is Tetris Effect Connected uh, we have with uh, the zone battle. So there are a lot of differences between the variants. We've discussed a lot. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, Lyra is the expert on this, but I'm going to try and... Let me see it. Correct me if I've gotten anything mm -hmm. wrong. Uh, Puyo Puyo has uh, differing piece sets, whereas most of the modern head-to-head -head variants uh, lock players into the same piece sets. Mm -hmm. So that makes it impossible to simply mirror your opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, the Like most other modern Tetris, it uses a seven-bag variation. Perfectly Ooh, are knocking out John PC. numbers. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with everything you've said so far. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that given the options within modern Tetris right now, PPT, although you said it is um, unusual in the not only not giving the players the same RNG, but um, the lack of garbage canceling, PPT is still considered to be the most quote unquote standard guideline Tetris there is. It's not fully like what I would consider standard, but between this versus TEC, TEC having the gimmick of the zone, this is more typical in a sense. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, when you when you look at you know the the modern guideline standards for like what it 
you know, the, the rules of what is Tetris and what is not Tetris. Uh, that, that makes a lot of sense considering this more standard in some ways. Uh, Speculosity, if you're still in the chat, like what, you know, what, what are you used to? We can explain more of the specific yeah. differences. Um, if you're coming to us from the world of classic, uh, the original classic NES Tetris does not have any uh, built-in competition mode for two players. In the world of classic Tetris, players are playing on two different systems, and the, comp the comparison and scores has to take place uh, some other way. Uh, generally, just by putting two two of them side by side and people like us yelling. Uh, speaking of scores, five all Salted Bread and John mm -hmm. Numbers in this PPT matchup. I believe this is a first to ten here. This uh, is first to seven. First to seven. Sir, first to seven. Thank yeah, no. you for telling me. It is uh, only only the top three matchups. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Go first yeah, because this is loser summer. Uh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Well, I hear uh, a lot of ooing from us. <laughs> Speculosity, this is a great place to uh, understand a bit more about uh, Tetris and uh, improve your knowledge because three different events were played here today at mm. Xeno Zero at the House of 3000 uh, at Xeno Zero. And uh, we still have, after this, uh, t uh, Tetris Effect Connected. My personal favorite. Another, another set of games. But yeah, no, there's, uh, you know... You can tell the difference from the look, uh, even though, uh, so the the biggest thing in terms of modern Tetris is uh, the, the guideline, the ghost piece, yes. uh, is what really separates modern from previous eras of Tetris. Uh, and so guideline Tetris, uh, as we said, PPT is in some ways the most standard of the guideline Tetris games yeah, right now. Right now, yeah. Uh, I think Tetris with a gimmick is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. well, like the, to how Zone Battle is, yeah. I, I, I like Zone Battle as well. There is a competitive uh, TEC that doesn't involve Zone. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, there's, there's score attack. Yeah. Uh, but that isn't versus Tetris. That is just a score comparison. Like, it would be classic, but it's still uh, guideline everything else. Mm -hmm. Match point for Salted. Taking it uh, six, 6 to 5 with John Numbers. Again, uh, no one is making anything easy. Nope. We, 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 we just don't see that happen. We, we, we saw like one or two shutouts very early on. Mm -hmm. But by and large, no one is taking their feet off the gas. Oh, for sure. And I think part of that just comes from the experience of these players, especially when it comes to playing against each other. That is a very nice... Um, Back-to-back -back TSDs. Yeah, that is... I always forget the name of that one. Uh, Imperial Cross. Imperial Cross. Yeah, that move is called Imperial Cross, often abbreviated as Imp Cross. That's sick. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's fun that they all have names, but sometimes it's hard keeping track of them. John Rivers is up high on the board here. Sulta definitely wants to close out this match. To take any chance you can to close out a match. Ooh, because... and that miss drop there might be it. Oh, there oh. it is. There it is. Salted reversing the early misfortunes. And John Numbers' number is up. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, that does mean more Harpy gameplay for us, but I think we will uh, survive and move forward as we always do when it comes to uh, Salted playing Harpy. And uh, that Salted uh, survives right along with us into the Losers Finals, RJ for Salted Dread. I uh, believe this won't be the first time we've seen this. <laughs> Not even our first time seeing this today. 